You didn't go? 今回は英語のちょっと分かりづらいところを見てみたいと思います。こういう微妙なところをちょこちょこあの出ますね、会話で。英語のネイティブ同士でもルールといいますか、習慣、その文化的なものっていうのかな、が決まってないですね。なんとなくこういう時。You didn't go. He didn't come. It isn't yours. 全然平気で使ってもいい時もありますし、使わない方がいい時もあります。またその便利な日本語が言いたくなりますね。微妙。<笑>でもね、こういうレッスン動画でね、あの、解説するのがちょっと難しいかもしれませんが、挑戦してみたいと思います。<笑>一緒に考えていきましょう。You haven't thought about it before? Well, let's remedy that by looking at the problem, the reason, the solution, and some example sentences. Let's figure this one out. First, let's look at the problem. You didn't go. You didn't go. As I mentioned in the introduction before, This is an area of English that really doesn't have any rules. You have to rely on feeling. That's probably one of the worst things to tell someone learning a foreign language, to rely on feeling, but it's kind of true for this one. With most other patterns of speech, we can usually nail down some kind of rule. But unfortunately, in this case, we're just going to have to see what we can come up with in terms of how best to use the language. Hey there, Pete. What's going on? Not much. I'm still getting over my cold. Just laying low for a while? Yeah, kind of. You didn't go to the party? No, I couldn't. You didn't meet Brian's new girlfriend? Unfortunately, not. You'll have no chance to meet her before she goes back to Ireland? I guess not. You're unhappy about that? What's with all these negative declarative questions? It isn't the way native speakers talk? Sheesh! You did it again! As always with these little skits, I am kind of hamming it up a bit. <laughs> That's just the way we roll on this channel. But it's just to get my point across. Let's dive a little deeper. I want to look at the reason why so many of my students seem to be using this pattern unnaturally. First and foremost, the most obvious thing is to compare the languages. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I've noticed over the years that people speaking in Japanese tend to use negative questions more than in English. So these kinds of phrases just seem to trip off the tongue when you're speaking in Japanese. Now, don't get me wrong, we do speak like this in English. 100% we do. But it brings me on to my second point. I feel by using a negative question in this way, it feels less aggressive. You know, not so strong. It's like taking one step back. So, what I'm trying to say is negative questions fit nicely with Japanese culture. Another point is the fact that a lot of people learn these styles of speech in junior high. It's kind of become a habit that's gone a little bit wrong. As I've mentioned, native speakers do use negative questions, don't we? Isn't it? <laughs> that kind of thing. Actually, I made a whole video dedicated to tag questions. If you've got time, check it out. Now, it must also be said that the English language is constantly changing and evolving. That's a fact. Well, just like Japanese too, yeah? In countries like the USA, where there are a lot of immigrants, English has been somewhat simplified in a way. Making it less complicated. With globalization and the spread of social media, this kind of traditionally incorrect English or <laughs> unnatural English has kind of been 
on the increase, much to my dismay. Expressions like, you didn't go, are more commonly heard than before. But I do strongly feel that we have to use them in moderation. Too much of anything is never good. <laughs> As the Japanese saying goes, hara hachibun me. So, if you want to sound as natural as possible, what should you do? Here's my advice. Think about whether or not it sounds even a little bit funny. This is when it all comes back down to feeling. Grammatically, this kind of structure is called a negative declarative question. It's actually a really odd combination. Let's break it down. You're saying something negative, you're declaring something, but it's also a question. You didn't go. He didn't come. It isn't yours. When do we actually use them? When is it acceptable? We can break it down into three situations. Expressing surprise. The speaker might have expected a different result and is surprised to hear otherwise. You didn't go seeking confirmation. The speaker is unsure and is asking for clarification. You didn't go showing disbelief. The speaker finds it hard to believe, like you're hearing something unbelievable. You didn't go. So let me just go over those points again. Expressing surprise seeking confirmation, showing disbelief. You didn't go. You didn't go. You didn't go. But you have to be careful not to use it too much. It can make you sound like you have no command over the language. I want you to try and think of some other ways to express yourself. Let me share a few examples. So we have the classic negative declarative question, you didn't go, but we can also say, didn't you go? Or did you not go? It's also a good idea to add on some additional phrases. This makes it smoother and altogether more conversational and less janky. <laughs> Use phrases like these. So you mean you didn't go? So you're telling me that you didn't go? So you're saying that you didn't go? Now, if you really, really want to use negative declarative questions, then there's something that I want you to be aware of. These kinds of questions usually have rising intonation. It means they rise up at the end. Now, you don't have to go overboard, but I want you to be aware of it. So instead of saying, you didn't go, Make it more like this. You didn't go. You didn't go. The ideal way would be something like this. So you mean you didn't go? So you mean you didn't go? So you ended up not going for the colonoscopy? What made you change your mind? So I softened the question by adding ended up to make it sound more natural and conversational. Of course, a colonoscopy is a medical procedure when a doctor uses a long, flexible tube with a camera on the end to look inside your large intestine. You didn't go yet? Didn't you have somewhere to be? I was supposed to be having dinner with my girlfriend, but she stood me up. So if you get stood up by someone, quite often on a date, it means they cancelled on you at the very last minute and you're left on your lonesome. I got stood up. So you mean that you're not going to cover the evening shift? But you said you'd do it last week. By adding the phrase, so you mean that, it makes the whole sentence run so much smoother. Are you not going to eat the rest of your cake? Can I be a greedy guts and finish it off for you? Instead of saying, you're not eating, I used, are you not gonna? A greedy guts is someone who eats way too much food. It's kind of a fun expression. So you're saying that you don't want anything for your birthday? 
You're such a wet blanket. If someone is a wet blanket, they bring the mood down. We're all feeling happy until you came along and stopped all the fun. A wet blanket.